Welcome back. It's great to see you. In this video, we're going to do the walkthrough of lab number two regarding multi-layer switching. And here is our topology that we're going to be using. We have the network 1010, the network 1020, and network 1030. In a previous walkthrough, we took care of lab number one. In a future video, I'll do the walkthrough for lab number three. In this lab, we're going to focus on multi-layer switch two using interface gig 101, this guy right here, as a layer three interface and using gig 102 that's over here as a layer 2 port in VLAN 30. So I have downloaded the lab. You can download the lab from thekeithbarker.com. It is the lab with this date on it, 2020 11 13. You can download it and that's our starting point for this lab. Lab number two is with the base configuration as downloaded from the website. And I am using Packet Tracer for this. If you are not yet using Packet Tracer, you can get a free copy of Packet Tracer at netacad.com. Sign with a free account and then download it for free. Download this Packet Tracer lab file and have at it. And so I also want to make sure you know this is a spoiler alert. So if you want to do this lab, pause this video right now and then work on the lab yourself. And then when you're ready to check your work, come back and check out the video. So if you're ready for this walkthrough, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a console to the MLS2, the multi-layer switch, and click on the tab for CLI. And let's verify our starting point. So there's a show IP interface brief, and we have no IP addressing whatsoever. Fantastic. So let's start with interface 101, which needs to be a layer three interface. So we'll go into configuration mode, interface gig one slash zero slash one, and we'll do a no switch port, which is how you tell that interface that it's a layer three port. And now that it's a layer three interface slash port, we'll give it an IP address on that 10.2 subnet. We'll use dot two for the last octet for its IP addresses. So we'll use the IP address command of 10.2.0.2 with a 24 bit mask. And we are set. So now if we do a show IP interface brief, there we go. Gig 101 has the IP address 10.2.0.2, and we should be able to ping 10.2.0.1, which is R1's address. We lose one on the ARP, that's okay. And then the, now the ARP is resolved, all the five go through. Fantastic. Now, let's get to the tricky part of this. They want, <laughs> when I say they want, it's what I want. I wrote this lab. So what we're going to do now is we're going to configure interface one slash zero slash two to be a layer two port that's a member or an access port as part of VLAN 30. And that's based on the instructions here. So we'll go to back to configuration mode, interface gig one slash zero slash two, and we'll say switch port mode access. So it knows it's not gonna trunk and switch port access VLAN 30. So boom, it created it for us, fantastic. So now if we do a, a show VLAN brief, I just, and I'm throwing the do in front of there because I'm in configuration mode. It's now showing us that for VLAN 30, gig 102 is there. And if we do a do show interface status, that's also going to confirm that we have an access port there. We could also do one more command is show, do show interface gig one slash zero slash two switch port. And that's also going to confirm what's going on with that dude right there. So it's an access port in VLAN 30. Fantastic. Now, the problem is, is that that server is now in VLAN 30. Da -da, but it needs a default gateway to get off of that local VLAN. And so on the multi-layer switch, we can create a logical interface, a switched virtual interface, an SVI for short, that has the IP address of 10.3.0.2. And then the server can then go ahead and use that IP address as a default gateway to forward packets off the local network. So let's create the logical interface for interface VLAN 30. So now this logical interface VLAN 30 is the layer three interface for that VLAN. And we'll give the IP address of 10.3.0.2 with a 24-bit mask like that. And let's verify we can ping the server. In fact, let's do a couple of quick verifications. Show IP interface brief, pipe exclude, anything that has the word unassigned in it. So great, we have the gig one slash zero slash one interface, which is a layer three interface, the physical port with the IP address shown there. And then we have the logical interface VLAN 30 layer three SVI, the switched virtual interface that has the IP address of 10.3.0.2. So if we try to ping 10.3.0.50, which is the server's IP address, we should lose one on the ARP and the rest should go through. And if we do that again, all of them should go through. Fantastic. Now. We still have the same problem we had with lab number one, and that is we don't have reachability. Anyway, say reachability between what? And the answer is this multi-layer switch knows nothing about the 10.1 network, and this router knows nothing about the 10.3 network. So we could do static routes or default routes that point to each other or a routing protocol. And I remember from the previous lab that IP routing was not enabled by default on this multi-layer switch, so I'm going to enable it there. And now we'll run router OSPF1 and 
you know what? Let's do this. Let's just change it up a little bit. Let's take off that routing process. No router, OSPF one. I'm gonna use EIGRP. You can use whatever you want. You can use RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, ISIS, BGP, I don't care. <laughs> um, in the world of CCNA, they're gonna focus primarily on OSPF with a tinge of EIGRP awareness. So just be aware of that. If you are new to EIGRP, please check out my videos on that before you go get certified because it's important to know the basics of EIGRP. Even though, I know, even though it's not on the blueprint, it's not listed as an exam topic, take it from me. You definitely want to know a little bit. Check out my videos in the CCNA playlist regarding EIGRP. You'll be glad you did. All right, so I'm going to run router EIGRP autonomous system one. Now, one thing about EIGRP is that the autonomous system numbers, they have to match. And they have to match between the routers that are going to neighbor up. And then we'll do a network 0000, press enter. And that's a fancy way of saying all interfaces are participating in EIGRP. Show IP EIGRP interface. And boom, we got our VLAN interface, that's for VLAN 30, and gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 1, both participating with EIGRP. Let's go to R1, and on R1, we'll enable EIGRP there as well. So config T, router, EIGRP, autonomous system 1, network. And I got to tell you what, man, EIGRP is the fastest converging protocol on the planet. It's so darn fast. And so now if we do a show IP route, we should now know about the 1030 network. So the D means we learned this via EIGRP. The 90 is the default administrative distance for an internal EIGRP route. And there's the composite metric that is used by EIGRP. So because we have the route there, and I also want to verify we have the route on MLS2, show IP route. Sure enough, it knows about the 10.1.0 network. We should now have connectivity, assuming the default gateways are correct on the laptop and on the server. Let's go to the desktop tab here on the client. We'll go to the command prompt and let's do a trace RT out to 10.3.0.50, and that looks good. There's the R1, there's the multi-layer switch, and there's the final destination itself. And let me scooch that over, we'll close that. And let's click on web browser right here to open that up. And we'll go to 10.3.0.50, and boom, awesome. Okay, one other thing we'd wanna do is save our configs as a, a thing of habit. So I'm gonna go to R1 and MLS and do a WR, which is a shortcut for write mem, which is also a shortcut way of saying copy running config to startup config. And then once I've done that, I'm going to click on file. I'm going to say open. I'm going to go to recent files. I'm going to go back to my original baseline. It's going to say, do you want to save your old file under lab two? I'm going to say yes. And then from here, I'm going to click on file and save as, and I'm going to name this lab three. And by doing so, that puts us into perfect position in preparation for the walkthrough for lab three, which I'm going to put in a separate video. So thanks for joining me in this walkthrough of this free Packet Tracer Lab. If you haven't done so already, please click on subscribe and I'll see you, my friend, in the next video. Sick of love songs